I want to tell you guys about uh, what is the difference between. Uh, I mean, I was telling you about the constitution, the two important terms. What are the? What do you mean by constitution, and what do we mean by Indian polity? See, constitution basically is a document that defines the structure of the government, and it forms the basic law of the land, and also it forms the basic um, supreme law of the land. Sometimes it is referred to as because every law in the country in any society is based on the constitution only and the term polity refers to the organized society based on a constitution a society that is organized on the basis of constitution is known as polity so that is the importance of indian constitution and polity in this subject what we are supposed to study and understand and what is being tested is how far you are able to understand the provisions of the constitution and also how far you are able to understand how the provisions of constitution are applied in the governance of the society so when we say governance it includes the very idea of how the society is administered by way of enactment of law policies schemes and projects towards the achievement of the welfare of the people this is what is actually indian constitution and polity refers to and your knowledge about this is being tested by the question in the civil service exams more so when it comes to civil service exams you are going to be one of the important key pins of the administration once you become selected to all india services or any of the group a services or group b services of the government of india and therefore it is essential and very much required for you to understand the constitutional indian polity and that is the significance of this paper and with it is because of this significance in the mains you have one full paper dedicated to constitution polity and governance which uh, has a score of about 250 marks and one of the very very important determinants of your final selection so with that note i want to uh, tell you clearly the importance of indian polity and indian constitution and with that idea <coughs> let me put it in let me sum it up in one sentence while constitution becomes the basic law of the land polity is the application of the constitution to governance of the society so we need to understand the constitution in its background of society secondly when it comes to the purpose of this webinar this webinar is directly related to related to the exam the civil services exam where you will understand the title of from the title of the webinar you must be able to understand that we are here to discuss about how current affairs and constitution and indian polity are interrelated <clears throat> when it comes to setting of questions in any competitive examination to any subject the examiner follows a very simple technique of choosing the current developments and then relating it to extrapolating it to the subjects for instance in our purpose i will i will show you how constitution and current affairs are interrelated in the past 2 years of questions and then you will be able to make out after that let us discuss about how the current development certain certain examples will let us take up certain examples of the current developments of today and what kind of questions and how the questions may arise in the prelims mains and to some extent the interview as well secondly i also want to tell you how to take notes for uh you know you have to i mean civil service examination preparation is not a one day affair it is a, a it's a kind of a marathon where you have to conserve your energy and consistently prepare and take notes towards that i shall also tell you how current affairs and constitutions constitution are related and how to take notes so that your preparation will become much more effective and take it close to the success success am i uh, clear as of now i presume that things are very clear and i'm moving on and in between one more thing i tell you after few 
slides of uh, presentation after presenting few slides i shall be giving you few questions <coughs> which you are expected to answer and i'll be giving you 30 seconds time and you have to answer those questions now let me go to the next uh, slide see basically how the questions are asked with respect to constitution see let me again apprise you one important thing when it comes to current affairs when it comes to civil service examination current affairs the question setter chooses a issue and then he extrapolates it to various subjects and he checks whether this issue contains questions from which are all the subjects from which uh, questions can be asked when when it can, with relation to or in relation to the current issue for instance if you take one issue for example if you take covid 19 as an issue <coughs> in the prelims there are potential questions to be asked directly from say life science that it can be a question relating to virus it can be a question relating to properties of virus it can be relating to uh, you know a comparison between bi virus and bacteria immun uh, uh, immunization programs etc this is currently related to this is issue but currently related to say uh, biology which is direct and everybody can make it up but there can also be a question relating to quality from covid situation for instance there can be a question from the covid situation relating to who are all i mean what is the difference between and or uh, the section 144 of the crpc has been invoked for health reasons whether it is allowable or not that kind of questions relating to quality can also be asked or there can be questions relating to economy and more specifically this question can be economy can be economy and covid can be more related with respect to mains so what is the impact of uh, covid lockdown with respect to economy in the prelims again i can tell you what is the uh, that can be another quality question for instance what is the uh, provisions of provisions relating to contingency management and emergency management that can be a question relating to disaster management act so this is how the question setter will think and this is how the question setter is going to use current affairs from current affairs he is going to extrapolate into some subject and then he is going to ask the questions relating to that now that is a broader aspect of how current affairs and civil service exam is related and how one issue will extrapolate into multiple questions from multiple subjects but however now today i am constrained to confine myself to constitution and indian polity so i shall zero down to that area i shall funnel it uh, let us funnel funnel down to constitution indian polity and current affairs when it comes to polity <clears throat> as i told you even from covid situation since it is a current development there can be several polity questions be asked from covid as well as all, i already told you that can be a question relating to disaster management that can be a question relating to departments and ministries which are actively participating or which are actively implementing the disaster management for instance ministry of health is involved ministry of uh, home affairs is involved and uh, that can be a question relating to national disaster management authority the prime minister is ex officio chairman and that can be a question who is ex officio chairman who is the vice chairman and who are all the members of selection committee these kind of questions can be asked from covid now the current issue is there and how questions can be asked we are able to understand clearly however when you look into the questions of previous questions of upsc prelims you can see a very clear pattern evolving when it comes to questions relating to constitution indian polity and when the questions are taken from the current affairs issues there are certain types of question and there are certain pattern of asking questions and in the first slide i'm giving you there is what i have observed is there is five important patterns in the way the questions are asked in the prelims any current issue they take up they take up the issue relating to enactment of a law if any law has been enacted if any policy has been framed when i say enactment of law it includes enactment of policy 
enactment of law, and then uh, any schemes, launching of any schemes. That they focus. So you have to focus on the current affairs relating to the enactment of law. Then you have to focus on the policies that is being launched and any scheme that is being launched. So this is point number one. Second is the question setter's focus is the constitution amendment. If there was any amendment that is taking place to the constitution or to any law, then definitely a question is being asked from that area. For instance, in the last two years, there have been several amendments. We have passed 125th, 103rd Amendment Act, 100, after 100th Amendment Act, the GST and the Bangladesh uh, issue. We have passed around six amendments. So you have to focus on those amendments as well. When it comes to amendment, you have to focus on the conceptual aspects relating to amendment also. Clear? The third pattern is relating to anniversaries and histories. When I say history, it is relating to history of constitution. It can be from the constant assembly, it can be from making of the constitution. And more specifically, the anniversaries. In case after the enactment of a law, a decade has gone. Or in case after the enactment of a law, 50 years have gone. Likewise, if there was any anniversary, there has been a question. I can give you one example. In the 2017 mains, there was a question relating to Coelho case. It was the 10th year of the Coelho case judgment. And that's, a, that's how the anniversary questions are also coming. I shall show you the model of the question in the recent years, uh, in the last two, two years, I shall, in, the, in due course of our discussion, I shall show you the examples of these questions as well. Then, the fourth pattern is relating to major events. When I say major events, for instance, the election of the president is a major event, which is of importance to constitution and Indian parliament. If you see a pattern in the UPSC questions, particularly mains questions, there is a question on election to the office of the president every fifth year. Every fifth year there used to be a question. You have the question papers with you, you can check it out. So whenever such a major event takes place, a question is asked. And after the general elections, if you see the pattern, after the general elections of every general election of general election to Lok Sabha, or when multiple states go for assembly elections, there has been a question relating to voting behavior and the regional or the regional political parties and their role. So you can see, if you analyze the questions, you can see that. It, it's quite uh, interesting that uh, it, it's quite interesting because it makes the entire exam absolutely predictable and brings us, brings exam to your control. So this is fundamental for clearing any exam. So you have to understand the exam first. So in management, that's a saying. Rothlis Berger, one important uh, management thinker says, you have to know the beast with which you are going to work beforehand. So when you are going to appear in the exam, you are expected to understand the exam first of all. And once you understand the exam, your exam will be in your control. And understanding the exam is, understanding the exam begins with understanding the questions. So whenever a major event takes place, there is a question relating to the major event asked from constitution. And the last pattern is the continuous occurrence. Whenever some issue is or some office is continuously occurring in the news, then questions relating to that is being asked. Again, I can show you the question, uh, why the question was asked based on the types of the questions. So let me sum it up. Actually, the questions are asked from current affairs and when it comes to constitution, the focus of the question setter is <clears throat> in this order or in this pattern, he focuses on enactment of law or policy or schemes and projects. And then he focuses on constitution amendment and then he focuses on, when I say constitution amendment, amendment to law as well. Then anniversaries and history and then major events and certain things which are continuously occurring in the news. This is a pattern in which the constitution issues are fixed for raising the questions. Now, how the questions are asked? 
what are the types of questions this is a pattern of uh, pattern of selecting the news items to or current affairs issues to set questions now let us move on to how the types of questions are again it's quite interesting to understand that upsc follows or in the upsc there are seven types of questions which are asked particularly from the constitution and the indian government these are concept based questions for instance there are several concepts in the constitution if you take the preamble every word in the preamble is a concept right sovereign socialist democracy secular republic justice political economic and equality justice political economic and social liberty equality and fraternity unity integrity everything is a concept apart from that there are several other concepts given in the dpsp as well for instance um undeserved want is there so likewise some these these questions are some concept based questions are being asked in the recent past and this is a new occurrence that this is a new occurrence where in the last 2 3 years the concept based questions have been uh, is being asked more in number second comes the organization and their role and third is constitution provision or the law relating to that then judgments of the supreme court then recommendations of the committees and reforms certain things are history based and facts and implications let us go to the questions quickly see this is a question asked in prelims 2019 see the concept based question in the context of polity which one of the following would you accept as the most appropriate definition of liberty see i have given for your reference i have given you the news item one of the news items where it came that right? why this question was asked so this is a concept based question liberty is a concept they are testing whether you have understood the idea of liberty or not then next we shall see look at the organization and its role the delhi pollution national geography the ngt question the cpcb the central pollution control board and the question is coming comparing the two organizations and what role do they play so guys yes. you can also see that the questions are coming from directly uh, newspapers as sir has also said the hindu so that means that uh, reading newspapers becomes a very significant point am i right sir with this point exactly exactly you caught the point very clearly you hit the nail on the head it is the most important one you have to read the newspapers see there are three tools for preparation one is current affairs the other is your conceptual books and then the question papers and in the question and papers you will understand the pattern read the news papers right, you will understand from where the questions are to be asked and then go to the books you will understand what is to be studied so, so guys a, i hope you can see that the questions uh, are you able to solve them i mean just have a look at it for one second and can you solve these questions the ngt has established has been established by an act whereas the cpcb has been created by an executive order of of the government so do we know the difference between the two if we know then that's great if we do not know that means uh, we need to go uh, an extra mile to cover our basics i hope i am right sir right sir concepts yes, and yes, everything you are. you are exactly you are exactly right and i'm going okay, to sir. give them a poll i'm going to give them a poll in a uh, few minutes and just i'll okay, run sir. through okay. that first so the third okay, is constitution so look at this is a hardiest case where uh, it said that right to marry is uh, one of persons one's choice it's quite interesting that the very statement is appearing in the newspaper right one's right to marry the person of one's choice then this is a constitution provision this is relating to article 21 and with respect to judgment when it comes to putasami case judgment on right to privacy the question was directly asked from that judgment in the prelims 2018 then if you see the recommendations of the committee see this is what i told you when there is a continuous recur continuous occurrence of the office of the governor and the controversy regarding the office of the governor in various states states like karnataka then madhya pradesh then uh, appointment of uh, telangana governor all these things came they said they asked the question of rajamanar i mean sarkariya commission recommendations so this is how the questions occur then the history based question look when the supreme court said sc st act may be placed in ninth schedule regarding the pcr act the protection of civil rights act the question is relating to ninth schedule history based question who was a prime minister at the time when ninth schedule was introduced first amendment 
So this is and and the next to, next one is a facts and implication. The last seventh one is. So look, Article seven, Article one forty two was in news for several cases. Now the question is relating to what is the implication? What it could mean? Which one of the following? They are trying to understand. They are trying to test whether you have understood what is enforcement of the decrees and judgments of Supreme Court. Now, see, this is how the questions are asked. Now, uh, let me request uh, the concept. I'll give you one poll here. The concept-based question. Can we um, can we give a poll to them for uh, the students? Yes, sir. We have uh, given the poll, guys. You have thirty seconds in your pocket. Your time starts has already started. Please try to uh, go for the right option. I hope all of us can solve the question. Guys, the window was to uh, be open for 30 seconds, but most of yeah. us have been not able to take this poll. So uh, 36 still have taken. What about the others? So guys, this is the time to be more interactive and be brave. So if you can do it now, then only you can be in a position to solve the questions in your prelims. Right? So solve, all of you. Please be quick. Because yeah, it's don't, don't, yeah Shari, is, Shari is absolutely right. Don't fear. This is a learning process, and during the learning process, you are expected to commit more mistakes. When you yeah, commit, that's right. you are learning faster. Some of us are still thinking that should we be going for it or not. Yes. So, guys, just do it. Don't think. This is not the time to think. This is the time to act. See, the very idea of me uh, trying to give you this question is see, today the defection has been in use for several reasons. So now it is. It, this is how you have to link it with that. So when defection is very much in use, you are expected to see. Uh, go to the tenth schedule. You have to understand the concept of defection. What it means. What it is. What it does not mean. So this is where you get. You are. You are likely to get confused in the prelims questions. So guys, we are now ending the poll because it's taking very long. So and now yeah. just within a second, the result is there in front of you. So shall I'll explain the question to you. See, basically the, the concept of defection, I have raised the question because at the, the very idea of defection or the concept of defection is very much in use. The courts have uh, given certain judgments regarding defection. And the in the state like Karnataka and Madhya Pradesh, MLAs are resigning. They are bypassing uh, the idea of tenth schedule, and uh, people are you know defecting, but they are doing it in a in in, in the garb of some other thing. So that's why the concept of defection comes into picture. So <clears throat> what is defection and what is not? So defection you have to go, you go to tenth schedule understand defection deals with two different sets of. Uh, Members of the legislature. One is elected, the other is nominated. When it comes to elected, the elected as a party member and elected as an independent candidate. Then comes nominated. So, what are the different conditions which under which a member is said to have defected? You will have to understand. And if you go to the, go to my book, actually, I have given you the flow chart of what uh, defection means and how it how it actually works uh, in the legislature chapter I've given. 
and once that uh, chart, once you look, once you see the flow chart, you will clearly understand. And this is exactly what I've been I'm trying to tell you when it comes to notes making. And when you when you prepare when you prepare your notes itself, try to use certain pictographic representations which you are comfortable with. For instance, if you go to my book, I have used only uh, flow charts and tables because flow charts and tables are pretty much easier for everybody to draw and use even in the exams. And when it comes to mains, if you are able to uh, you know, bring out flow charts, you can give, bring out certain comparative tables, your clarity will improve and your, your, your voice to score better than your competitors. So for that, you have to practice taking notes and while taking notes itself, you have to employ all these things, then it will be better. It is easy for you to remember as well. Uh, and then, right sir, and sir, I request you to give the right option to the students. So yeah, the option, is C, the option is C, which among the following is not correct representation of defection under the constitution of India. The option is C, an elected member of a house resigns as a member of that house before the expiry of six months from the date on which he takes a seat is wrong. This is not defection because this is exactly what was happening. See, now you can understand how the question comes, how current affairs is related. The and very please, concept uh, of chat, give in the chat box how many of us have said C for CAC. Please continue, sir. You keep explaining, yeah. sir. Thank you, yeah. sir. That, that is, a, that is see, a member resigns is not an issue. A member can resign. And this is the this is a backdoor entry or this is a of the 10th schedule, then they contest the elections and they again now get appointed. See, after the amendment to 10th schedule, the inter after the insertion of Article 75, Clause 1A and 75, Clause 1B and 164, Clause 1A and 1B, the constitution clearly bans a member disqualified on the ground of defection being appointed as a minister or to any constitutional or remunerative post. Now what they do? They resign. So now what they are doing, they are bypassing the law and the bypassing of the law has now really become a concern for the administration. So this is how the UPSC chooses a news to take a question and then to test your conceptual background. I hope uh, you have understood that. right? And let me give you another question relating to the constitutional law and the provisions of law. Shall we go for the poll now, Shetty? Are they answering? Yes, sir. They are answering, sir. But, sir, you have to, uh, I think, encourage them because uh, some of them are still shying away from answering. Yeah, please. But now, please, do, please. Yeah, please come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Committing a mistake. And when you, you'll be bold to commit a mistake. Only then you'll understand the, you know, the root of the discussion, what we're actually into. Very right, sir. I remember when we used to study, we used to, uh, you know, hesitate while asking the questions in the class. Yes. And yes. later on, I realized that it's important to ask the questions to the faculty. Yes. The more you ask questions, the more you have doubts, raise doubts, the more you learn. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. And, uh, yeah, it's in the behavioral theory that it is told. God love you. says, when you commit more mistakes, you learn faster. Oh, great, sir. Great learning. Don't fear that you uh, don't fear to commit mistakes. One who commits mistakes in the classroom wins. And that's the one who actually uses a teacher. <laughs> right, sir. So, guys, we'll be closing this uh, poll now at two minutes. So what is the correct option for this question? Yeah, the correct 
the correct option is a answer is a <coughs> okay sir the answer is a see look at the if you uh, uh, participants please do look at the question the way it has been framed the question is the current affairs issue on the basis of which the question is asked it's very clearly citizenship amendment act 2019 and which is hot topic that is going on and look at the option look at the answer options <coughs> it is misleading actually how many of you have uh, how many of you have chosen b as your answer for you i'm telling you it, this is the trap in which you are clearly falling constitution of india provides for a single citizenship irrespective of religion this when you when you when you look at this question there is every possibility that you may get confused why unnecessarily religion is coming here and probably you would have smartly skipped and chosen b or certain students who are putting putting you know, you know in a much more deeper way they'll opt for c option b is the factual question it's a factual statement which is not correct because there is a provision relating to citizenship of persons covered by assam accord and citizenship act 1955 which is section 6b and it is a section 6b which is very much in use in the caa 2019 because it is adding an amendment to section 6b so when it comes to people who have illegally migrated from bangladesh pakistan and afghanistan they are provided citizenship under naturalization or registration under notwithstanding anything in section b which is the provision relating to citizenship of persons covered by assam accord of assam accord so i have slightly twisted the statement taking it as there is no provision if you had not followed that properly this uh, because this is a very simple fact that can be easily overlooked for instance as uh, if i ask you if, uh, if you ask the common man about jammu and kashmir people simply say that article 370 has been abrogated and we all know that if you are not careful you will also purchase that argument and you may commit a mistake article 370 is not abrogated but under article 370 class 3 only the president is empowered to make the order and based on that only the con uh, constitution application order has been made so such simple facts you must be very clearly noting down remember this is what is called as notes making you have to focus on the facts see when it comes to notes making in when it comes to issues when you look into the issues please categorize them into three different aspects one is a fact and concept what are the minute and the smaller facts and the concepts involved in that particular uh, issue then second you go into the main features main features i say if it is a law what are the main features of it and when it comes to facts i would say this kind of facts whether there is a provision or not and what is the concept involved in that what is for instance in the citizenship act there are concepts like illegal immigrants aadhar is there npr is there nrc is there what is the difference between npr and nrc that can be a question asked in the prelims and how it is different from other that can be a question regarding that so these are basic facts and concepts you have to take up and then the main features of that what it did what it amended what it did not what provisions it added what provisions it deleted and the third aspect is find out the consequences consequences when i say the implications and consequences what is its effect how it is going to what is its object what is objective of it and what are the criticism when i say about the implications i'm talking about the critical analysis most of the times the critical analysis is important for your mains when it comes to the critical analysis prelims will be more focused on your facts and concepts and then the main features and critical analysis so for the prelims a and b and for the mains c and b sometimes the main features of the act can be asked in the mains as well and more so it is about the critical analysis now i can give you the third question relating to judgments and implications of the supreme court shri can we go for the third question can you project the third question please yes sir so it's front of their screens only judgments and implications guys i hope yes. you all can see that So the question is, uh, which of the following is not an implication of Article Thirty of the Constitution? Yes. yes. So they are not actually voting now; they are not opting. Guys, are you able to opt? No problem. Let me explain to them. So okay. when it comes to the question again, you see, 
this question the news item they have started so some of them have started yeah so guys please take time and do it yeah, take time and do it let me tell you why it was asked it is because of the supreme court judgment upholding the west bengal madras act mm -hmm. okay the sir. supreme court has upheld the west bengal madras act uh, it is relating to article 30 article 30 again relates to the education institutions set up by the minority community okay, when it comes to minority community linguistic and religious minority communities okay sir so shall i give you the key now answer now i know sir they are attempting it sir let them attempt sir i find this question to be a bit tricky <laughs> yeah it is it is i think uh, we all are sailing in the same boat so when it comes to implication you have to think about what is the application of the provision how the provision will apply how the right will be exercised great guys kudos to all of you i mean uh, this is a great attempt that we have come up with sir it's a new way of learning indian polity and constitution which we have never learned so because uh, most of the books that we see are very bulky or the videos that we go through they are sometimes yeah. not very helpful but yes sir we are trying to i am also personally learning many things today and i uh, should thank you <laughs> <laughs> no sir it's my pleasure <laughs> shall i give the answer to them now yes, sir uh, some of them are still solving let them solve because this is yeah, a very yeah. tricky question at 250 we'll close actually the poll yeah 2 minutes 50 seconds okay sir please sir tell the option to them which of the is yeah, the that, right yeah the answer option is b see actually you have to think of article 30 article 30 has two important clauses one is article 30 class 1 which provides for the right to uh, set up the educate institutions and administer by the linguistic and religious minorities and 30 class 2 provides for the power of the state to regulate for maintaining the excellence in education and in between there is another clause class 1a which was added by the constitution 44th amendment act when the right to property was repealed from repealed as a fundamental right and article 300a was added right to property of the minority education institutions were to be secured so article 30 class 1a was added so according to article 30 class 1a parliament or the state legislature has the power to make specific law to provide for compulsory acquisition of the property of minority education institutions but the compensation must be so that it will not impair the right guaranteed by 30 class 1 which means the compensation must be adequate and it should be adequate to the extent of continuing to run the institution rather than a mere com mere compensation but see here the issue is this <clears throat> in the west bengal madras act the madrasa teachers were to be recruited by a board which was which was um, questioned by which was challenged and this challenge was upheld by the court so that is why i am asking you this implication side so so please do note so please do note that it is uh, important for you to understand the provisions along with the implications as well when it comes to implications this is where i tell you when judgments come please do focus the implications may be from there right and now the questions what you can focus when it comes to taking notes see today you know citizenship amendment act is very much in uh, news so there are certain concepts i have listed few concepts which can be of 
importance to uh, relating to the citizenship of India. It can be about naturalization. It can be about who is OCIs, who are overseas citizens of India, and the process of registering as overseas citizen of India. Then termination and deprivation of citizenship. Then NPR and NRC, other, and the constitution provisions from you know, Article 5 to Article uh, 11. So these are the areas where the questions can probably be asked when it comes to uh, Citizenship Am Amendment Act 2019. Similarly, the issue of uh, MLAs resigning in states like Karnataka, again, the concept of defection and collective responsibility, provisions relating to uh, you know the vacancy in the vacation of seats in the houses of parliament and state legislature, the disqualification grounds, and uh, Article 103, the disqualification decisions relating to disqualification. So such questions can be asked in these issues. Similarly, when it comes to state can regulate minority inclusion, Article 30 visa, these aspects can be asked. What is minority? And there have been, in, with respect to minority inclusion, there are certain history issues. Motilal Nehru Committee of 1928, which recommended specifically for uh, having provisions relating to the rights of minority, and then the Sapru Committee of 1945, which again recommended for uh, having uh, you know certain specific uh, provisions. And there is a National Minorities Commission. When it comes to National Minority Commission, you can say organization and its role. What is National Minority Commission, whether it is a constitutional body or not, if it is a statutory body which law was, it was enacted, and such kind of questions. Because it's also, uh, NMC is also very much in use. So please do take care. NMC uh, is also very much in use. So who, who will appoint the members? What, what is its status? It is being uh, given um, constitution status. Amendment is on the parts. So organization and role can also be there. Similarly, the state cannot deny free speech on internet, the social media thing. The Supreme Court has told that it is a fundamental right to freedom of expression. So you, can, you have to understand the meaning of expression. Expression is one term in the constitution which has been interpreted widely after expression, after right to life, liberty and expression. These three terms are interpreted to the most. So try to understand the meaning of expression. Then you try to understand the meaning relating to expression of dissent, the freedom of speech and expression. Right? Similarly, the freedom of press. And then reasonable restrictions on the grounds on which the reasonable restriction may be uh, imposed on um, the freedom of speech and expression and also the concept of reasonable restriction what do you mean by uh, you know test of reasonableness these aspects you have to focus on similarly justice samita roy committee on prison reform supreme court had applied i mean had appointed this committee and the committee has come up with its recommendations now there are certain constitutional issues relating to say constitutional provisions of article 39a so 39A again, how, when was it in, in, when was it inserted? Which amendment it was inserted? What actually it provides for? And its implication is free legal aid and speedy trial, which the Supreme Court has already told that is part of right to life, Article 21. So you have to focus on the current affairs issue and then find out. And as I've given you the seven major things, you just focus on these seven things. It will be easy for you to take notes for prelims. Similarly, when it comes to mains. Let me tell you that as well. When it comes to mains, speech on uh, speech, can, I mean, when it comes to social media issue, that can be a question. This is one issue from where question can be asked both in the Indian constitutional part and also in the governance part. So we can focus on the impact of um, you know the freedom of speech on internet or freedom of speech on social media upon the society. How it affects how it affects the social psychology, etc. The pros and cons of social media and what are the different uh, forms of social media this can be asked in the governance aspect as well when it comes to constitution part it can be more confined to prelims only or in the mains they may ask you a question relating to freedom of expression what do you understand from the concept of freedom of expression how the freedom of expression has been modified in the context of the social media today this kind of questions can be asked in the mains so, so the same way, the same way in every aspect, when it comes to Amitabh Rai committee reforms, also the question can be asked in the mains about the prison reforms, right? Prison reforms can be asked in, say, governance or in the paper three, the internal security. Both ways it can be asked. So focus on these areas. 
Shri, I think uh, now no, I can take up uh, the questions if they have. Uh, sure, sir. We have actually two questions. The first question talks about what is the difference between policy and scheme? Policy and the scheme. See, policies are, uh, for instance, we have national, a new economic policy or fiscal policy. A policy is a very broad framework and for implementing policies, several schemes will be formulated and implemented by the government. For example, we have national literacy policy under which we will be having Sarva Siksha Abhiyan or Rashtriya Madhyamik Siksha Abhiyan. Abhiyan is a scheme, whereas national literacy policy will be a policy. Policy is a broad framework setting objectives and the objectives are broken into targets and goals. To achieve the goals, schemes are implemented. I hope this question is clarified. I assume it to be yes. And so the second question is regarding uh, the last question, which of the following is not an implication of Article 30 of the Constitution. Yes. So sir, uh, the candidate, the student, he or she is seeking uh, a sort of explanation regarding it. I hope, uh, so let me tell you guys, we have started our question and answer session also. So uh, your questions are welcomed. I'll be taking up your questions and then sir will be giving the replies. So guys, please be more interactive. It is an opportunity. It's not simply a webinar. Take the maximum that you can. Kudos. So actually when it comes to the question, let me read the question for you first. Which of the following is not an implication of Article 30 of the Constitution? Option A, the state has the power to impose regulations upon the education institutions established minorities for ensuring excellence in education. This is very much an implication of education. See, when it comes to a fundamental right, there are two aspects. One is regulation of the right, the other is restriction of the right. When it comes to restriction, the restrictions are generally applied to ensure that everyone, each one of us, or me exercising my fundamental right, must not be interfering or intruding into you exercising your fundamental right. For that, it may be, uh, it may be restricted. Secondly, for the implementation of any law, or any program, sometimes a restriction may be imposed. For example, the lockdown is a restriction imposed on our freedom of our freedom of movement in order to ensure that the community spread, community transmission of COVID will not take place to break the chain. So this is a restriction. Regulation is to you know in order to it is it is like um, you know what is regulation actually? It is like a sort of a control or streamlining the way you exercise your right. So when it comes to Article 30, Article 30 guarantees the right to establish educational institutions by the minorities and administer them on their own. The state will not interfere. This does not mean the state cannot regulate. It has to be regulated because when it comes to education, the education has to have uniformity and it also must have some level playing field to everyone because it is involving students and their lives. So the regulation, the state is empowered to regulate. So it's a very clear implication. That is what the Supreme Court has told. When the right society has to be regulated in order to maintain level playing field, equality and equity. So Article 14 is a principle of fundamental rights and in order to maintain that equality in equality, look at the second C. Taking most reasonable regulations and education institutions established by minorities for the purpose of ensuring sanitation, competence of teachers, maintenance of discipline, etc. Again, see, this is about the excellence in education or these are the, when you break the excellence in education, there are certain physical components which will emerge out. These are those physical components. For example, sanitation is very important. See, toilets for girls students is very much important. When the that can be regulations imposed by the state and state can even impose, you know, penalty, which the minority institutions cannot claim that they will not be, they'll be exempted of it. These are certain fundamentals which nobody is exempted, including the minority institutions. It is also implied in that right. Look at the statement D. There is no constitutional right for an institution to receive state recognition and the state may impose reasonable conditions for receiving its recognition. This is again very important. The constitution guarantees the right to establish and administer and run the institution, but it does not constrain the state. 
to grant the recognition just because it is a minority institution. The state can impose the regulations and check whether all the conditions are satisfied and then accordingly the state may go for either granting or refusing to grant the recognition. So just because you are a minority institute, it will not be granted to you, but it has to be granted only based on you satisfying the conditions in the interest of everyone. So all these three are implied in Article 30. The right is not an absolute right. And the fourth implication is the, st the state, the parliament or state, parliament or the state legislature can enact a law for compulsory acquisitioning of the property provided it is for a public cause. It is for a public purpose. However, the state must ensure that the institution is able to run. This is a safeguard given to the minority education institutions. All the all the three A, B, A, C, D are direct implications. And in the B statement, I have slightly modified, stating that the state has no power, but the state has the power. All the four. If you remove the no in option B, then you will understand all the four are implied in Article 30. Am I clear now? Yes, sir. I'm very clear. I hope uh, the student is also very clear. So uh, you can type it in the chat box. Or do you need more clarification? And sir, meanwhile, uh, the student types, I have another question. It is saying yeah. that, sir, just narrate a single question based on COVID-19 under quality side. I think uh, the student is trying to ask say, how we can expect a question related to quality mm. with respect to COVID-19. So I think this is yeah. the uh, meaning of this question. I hope, Vignesh, I'm very right when you are Typing this question. Yeah. So with respect to COVID-19, see the uh, you, you can again, again I, I tell you, I, you can go to the types of question. There, I, I'll explain to you with the type of question. That can be a concept-based question. You check whether there can be a concept-based question. Any of these facts or any of these seven types. Of the cup, let me tell you. With respect to COVID-19, quality question can be from the ministries as i told you the first thing is disorders second thing is the concept of lockdown and how is it different from say emergency see we never knew the constitution doesn't provide for um, lockdown kind of thing lockdown is a new term that we have coined so what is lockdown and based on lockdown you have to focus on the right to freedom of movement and then the restrictions uh, the re grounds of reasonable restrictions upon the uh, freedom Freedom of movement and other aspects. In fact, in uh, once it was in the mains also they have asked a question: What are the restrictions imposed upon limitations imposed upon the right to freedom of movement apart from the constitutional grounds? There are five grounds in the book. In my book, I have given you. In my book, I have given you. There are several aspects. Say, for instance, parliament, the strategic institutes, strategic institutions, nuclear installations. These, these are although they are within the territory of India, you have you have restrictions. And in the private uh, property, you cannot enter. It's a trespass. So you cannot claim that entering into the private private property and say that it is within the territory of India. I have the right to freedom of movement. You cannot say. So these are all some of the things. Similarly, the lockdown. I have updated it in that list also. Uh, lockdown has imposed a restriction upon our freedom of movement. And you tell me. On what grounds? In on what grounds lockdown is imposed? Now this can be question, right? So grounds of reasonable restriction and other modes by which the uh, freedom of movement can be restricted can be asked with respect to COVID. Then fourth, the institutions, which are all the institutions that are involved in the control of COVID. It can be both. The, when I say institutions, it can be both. When you when you say when I say institution, it can be read as both medical. I mean uh, life science question and also as quality question. Right, what is their role? So ICMR is there. Likewise, which are all the institutions involved can be asked. Then comes the departments, which are the ministries of the union government, or which are the uh, departments of the union government, which is responsible for the implementation of, say, Disaster Management Act 2005. Then, there can be a question relating to, say, PM care. What do you mean by, why is that uh, a PM care fund is created? Where will the fund go? Will it be, then what is the uh, relationship between PM Relief Fund, PM Care Fund, and then the Contingency Fund of India, and the Consolidated Fund of India? So you have to focus on Article 266 and 267. Right? Contingency Fund and Consolidated Fund. How the funds are appropriated or withdrawn from these funds? 
right so these are some eight questions i am giving you as of now so likewise you have to uh, you know uh, think it off think it over then you can understand i hope i am clear yes sir so actually where you ended regarding certain funds prime minister care fund or prime minister national yeah. relief fund uh we had a fortunately we had a question related to it only by arul pandey saying that difference between what is the difference between prime minister care fund and prime minister national relief fund yeah see prime minister's national relief prime minister's care fund is a new fund which is uh, set up as a trust it's a new fund which is set up as a trust if you if you can uh, uh, look into that i'll understand i can uh, you can see that uh Uh, in fact, I have uh, given that in my book as well. If you can uh, go through it, because there are so many points. One, one fundamental difference I can tell you this: Prime Minister Care Fund is set up as a trust, and the Prime Minister Relief Fund is also set up as a. I mean, it's also from the contribution of um, individuals and uh, organizations. But the special uh, fund for the COVID thing has been there. So I have given it in my book, and you can go through it. i think so we are done with today's session yeah. uh, and students if you have more relevant questions please let us know and we are already and, uh, running sorry uh, sorry sorry to interrupt you with respect to the no difference problem. between difference between pm care fund and uh, pm relief fund i shall uh, i shall send you the uh, detail i shall send you the table of comparison to you and you can share with them it's if it is sure. possible i think so there is one last question Uh, so the this is whether anglo indian belong to minorities no they don't belong to uh, see as, as such i cannot say this, i cannot uh, answer this question straight away as no or yes because the very concept of minority is not defined in the constitution or in law the the idea of minority is defined on the basis of a locality a non dominant group in a locality is known as minority it could be linguistic or it could be religious so anglo indian is a different uh, you know it's a very completely different uh, concept so they will not be bracketed under the concept of minority because they are they are more considered to be kind of a race according to article 366 anglo indian refers to any person who's uh, in his lineage in his lineage any in any one generation if the male is a european then he is termed as an anglo indian i may be termed as an anglo indian if in the lineage my father great grandfather grandfather any one of them any one male member progenitor was a european then he will be called he will be called as an anglo indian so they won't fall under minority as such i will fall under minority but regarding the religion what they follow and with respect to the region where they are locality where they are they may fall under minority but as such anglo indians Anglo Indian as a community cannot be called as minority. And sir, I think uh, this is the end of the session. And Manideep has said that it was an amazing session. Always a pleasure to listen to your lecture, sir. So, guys, uh, thank you all of you. And some questions which are uh, like for general preparation, we may not be able to take. Uh, I would request you send only those questions which are like doubts or which are associated with today's webinar. How to prepare? When to prepare? I have made lots of webinars and videos. I conduct also uh, webinars, and all those webinars are being uploaded on the YouTube. So you can go there and you can connect with them. In case you have further doubts or you have suggestions for us to conduct webinars on some further topics, you can always. always you can share your uh, thoughts on my email id that is sherry.singh at the rate person.com right so i think so it was an amazing session guys i hope you enjoyed it we had uh, a yeah. lot of things to learn and a uh, wonderful people wonderful audience and i think so they are going to make a difference and they are going to make a mark in the administration of the country we require young people like you those who are tolerant intelligent and they know how to steer through the hard times thank you sir yeah if you wish you all the best sir thank you very much and thank you uh, students for your time and i hope i have not wasted your time and given you something a bit uh, value i have added to you thank you very much for the opportunity thank you sir for the opportunity thank you sir thank you so much and uh, my email id i have typed in the chat box sherry.singh s h e w r y .s i n g h at the ratepearson.com we can always have 
uh, doubt sessions, interactive sessions, if you demand and if you want. And Sir's new book is second edition of his book is now just coming in the market. I would request you to go through it and take the maximum of it. Right? Wish you all the very best. And thank you for joining us. Stay, stay healthy, stay safe, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.